Hello, my name is Sonia Livingstone and I'm a professor of social psychology at the London School of Economics and Political Science. And I'm very pleased to give you a short presentation today um, speaking about Global Kids Online and EU Kids Online, two research projects which have sought to provide an evidence base for children as they go increasingly online, encountering a range of risks and opportunities. Um, and the purpose, of course, of gathering such evidence is to find ways by policymakers and practitioners to minimise the risks and maximise the opportunities for children in a digital world. I'm going to share my screen and show you a short presentation. Uh, so this is really uh, to introduce Global Kids Online and to recognise that uh, going online is a global experience. Children everywhere around the world are gaining access, but with considerable inequalities and differences as they do so, and in very different cultural and uh, political contexts that we need to understand. So I invite you to look at the Global Kids Online website there uh, to discover more. As a project, Global Kids Online aims to construct a research framework and a research toolkit for global comparative research on children's online experiences. And to do this, we have created an international network of researchers and experts and sought to build national capacity uh, among researchers and policymakers. Over time, we have been expanding the evidence base and informing policymakers and practitioners to support children's rights in the digital age. Global Kids Online is a collaboration among UNICEF Office of Innocenti, uh, the London School of Economics and Political Science, where I speak from, and the EU Kids Online Network, uh, a network of researchers across Europe about which I will say a little more. At the global level, we have we are now working in about um, 20 countries or more. Uh, but here are some findings briefly from 11 countries. And I'm giving you here the URL of our first synthesis report uh, and the um, pictures so you can see um, uh, the nature of the reports and the countries that we cover. Uh, we have um, a number of countries in Europe in uh, South America, uh, a few in Africa, the Philippines, and so forth. And we're in touch with many um, around the world. As we gather this research findings, uh, I think what's really crucial uh, is to recognize that this is research for impact. So I just wanted to show you very briefly uh, some of the impacts that have resulted from the endeavor of gathering such research. So this is selective impact based on a report we did for Global Kids Online um, a year or two ago. And you can see, I realize this is a busy slide, but you can see uh, that in each country, the research findings uh, are resulting in some really valuable changes. And broadly speaking, the changes are of two kinds. Um, working often with the Ministry of Education to improve uh, the digital literacy and skills of children, sometimes also their teachers and parents. And working with a range of government ministries, finding ways to improve children's safety, building in um, safety by design or creating policies which regulate internet providers, content providers, in ways that make children's lives safer online. Uh, and there are different findings because the impacts will always vary according to the priorities of a country. But overall, I'm encouraged that many countries around the world are valuing evidence, recognizing the importance of maximizing children's digital opportunities, and the importance of minimizing children's risk of harm and finding strategies to improve things. If I focus in on Europe now, in the EU Kids Online project, uh, in all the countries on the map you see on the slide, uh, we did a survey uh, very recently in 19 countries 
and compared the findings with the survey that was done 10 years before. Some headline findings, children's time online has doubled in that last decade. Their access to the internet is now via a personal device primarily. It really matters what age of child we're talking about because there are very big age differences. Um, but perhaps surprisingly, there are few gender differences. So broadly speaking, the more children gain access to the internet, the more they gain skills and the more they gain opportunities. And this is a trend that increases with age. But some risks of harm have also increased in the last 10 years. Um, and that not all risks lead to harm, but of course some do, and there is increasing reason to find ways to keep children safe online. There's also a, a persistent problem in society. When children encounter harm, very often they don't tell anybody. And we need to create a, a much more positive climate of support around children so that they are able to talk. There are also, as you may imagine, uh, even within uh, these European countries, very many differences across the countries. And I'll just show you one slide with those differences, though the report here um, uh, shown has very, very many tables and charts and graphs. And you can look up the finding for different ages, girls and boys and different countries. But just one slide, given that my time is short. If you look at the picture on the left, what we show here is the number of risks that children report encountering, the number of different risks they report encountering each year. So have they experienced cyberbullying or uh, been exposed to pornography or seen uh, content with self-harm or suicide or hate? Um, so we plot the country average with the number of risks at the bottom and on the um, on the side, we report the percentage of children who say they have experienced harm, that they've been upset by something online in the last year. And you can see a broad trend, um, fewer risks, less harm, more risks, more harm. And it, we, we, we could then ask ourselves if your country is in the lower left quadrant, something perhaps is going well in terms of protecting children. If your country is in the upper right quadrant, there is more work to be done to reduce the risks and especially to reduce the harm. If your country is in the bottom right quadrant, Germany, for example, or Norway, something interesting is happening because children still experience the risk, but they don't report the harm. And that might be ideal because then children encounter a bit of risk which builds their resilience, but not too much harm, which is what we really want to reduce. On the uh, right hand side, I've shown um, the children, the percent of children who say, I feel safe on the internet. And as you can see, those who say, I feel safe on the internet varies a bit by age. Older children tend to feel a bit safer, but it varies a lot by country. And in some countries, children feel very safe, Germany, Norway, and in other countries, they feel less safe, um, Spain, Russia. Something to think about and to identify what's needed next. I want to end by saying that uh, key organisations internationally are working to develop guidance for states on how to keep children safer online while also respecting and protecting their rights to freedom of expression, to privacy uh, and to uh, participation in a digital world. The Council of Europe has produced its guidelines to respect, protect and fulfil the rights of the child in the digital environment. And the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child has produced the general comment on children's rights in relation to the digital environment. And this provides um, uh, guidance for states on what to do next. Do please visit eukidsonline.net for further findings for Europe and Global Kids Online 
www.ncrpresearch.net for further findings and also tools for researchers. And I thank you now for your um, attention and I wish you well with your event. Thank you.